Hello, friends. Continuing with the last episode on communicating with teams, we start today with looking at how to manage and really pace your meetings with your teams. Very often, meetings are a colossal waste of time. Okay? Because they are not well planned, not scheduled, they are quite often unnecessary, and they are very often unproductive. But if the meeting is well planned, it is one of the best opportunities you have to increase teamwork and come out with nice, fresh ideas to take your business or your organization forward. So as a leader, you have to learn the skill. There are many skills. We've been talking about all the skills that leaders need. There's no shying away from it. Okay, you've got to be multifaceted. So one of the other skills that you do, additional skills that you need to learn as a leader is to master the skill of managing and running a meeting efficiently and with sound results, with the goals achieved for which that meeting has been called. Learn to expertly steer conversations and meetings towards what is the right solution you had in mind when you call the meeting. And let idle chatter happen, but learn how to steer the chatter so that it becomes something that is interesting, relevant to the meeting, and where then the other teammates start giving their views, opinions, and you come out with ideas and you start ideating. Okay, these ideas can give a meaningful change to your organization, which is very, very necessary. Okay. I think the next that will help you to master the meetings, to make your meetings more effective and more fruitful, more result-oriented. I think one of the first things that a leader needs to learn about managing a meeting is to actively listen. Very often, leaders just talk, but that's not enough. Yes, you need to talk because you need to convey the what. But after that, listen, okay? Grasp the meaning behind the words that some team members are expressing. Those words have a meaning. They are saying something for a reason. So make sure that you understand and grasp. Acknowledge what they are saying. Register it. Just don't listen. Acknowledge it. Okay? Don't just hear them out. Acknowledge it and Naturally, you're going to respond to it. And at this time, I would again re-emphasize something I told you earlier. Use the yes and approach. That's right. Okay. And anchor well. There will be many ideas that will be flowing from different people. Make sure you take them into consideration sequentially. And again, follow the yes and method. Saying, saying okay, so and so said this. And yes, that's a good idea. And we can do this, which is the idea of the other person. So yes, and approach is something that will help well. And you have to anchor well, because you will need to remember and link all the different ideas together. And whenever there is a query asked of you, which will often happen in meetings, confidently and honestly answer the same. Now, this is something that you do in a face-to-face -face meeting. But trust me, friends, conducting a virtual meeting which happens very often in today's world, although the COVID is over. Okay, there are still people who work from home. You're working with remote teams. Very often, organizations are spread across the globe and therefore, virtual meetings are the better way of connecting. They're cost-effective. They avoid unnecessary travel. And when you're, as I said, with remote teams, this is a very necessary part. Okay, so virtual meetings is also something that you will always have to conduct and you have to get used to. Now, naturally, we all know that virtual meetings sometimes are boring. 
or maybe most of the times are boring because they lack the excitement of having some people sitting in front of you and thrashing out things or discussing things. Okay, so virtual meetings lack that excitement and that energy, you know, when you're in a live meeting, the energy that you're talking of is very, very severe. Okay, so no live feedback is possible and you don't get to connect with your teammates or your audience as easily or as efficiently as you would connect with them in a face-to-face -face meeting. But in spite of these drawbacks, it's not completely a lost cause. And there are some small actions that one can take, really small, simple actions, to while communicating through this channel that can make the whole experience worthwhile and rewarding, you will get great results also. <clears throat> so one of the first things that you can do is to control your body language. Imagine that you're on a live TV show where you would do everything normal. You will show your emotions. And even in such virtual meetings, show your emotions and do not mute your talk. Very often we tend to mute our talk in the sense that you will reduce your emotions, you will... Maybe just give the message like a mo in a monotonous tone. So don't do that. Don't mute your talk. In fact, go the other way. Increase your emotions. Make your tone better. And use more gestures. Yes. Because that conveys that energy, which by just using words doesn't happen. When you see my hand flashing, you know I'm doing something. So it's the same in a virtual meeting. In fact, we are talking virtually. Okay, and you get get your whole body into that. Unfortunately, I don't do that. I'm sitting and talking. But the real way, and I do that when I'm conducting meetings rather than just recording my pod podcast, is that I stand and talk. And I get my whole body into the act. Because there are times when your body delivers messages better than your words. And when you are standing up, you are able to get the energy across which whilst being seated you can't get that right I don't know what the oomph value so to say okay you don't get it so when you're standing your attitude your actions your position of the legs everything counts and it makes it a much better yes. control your attitude okay we all miss the live audience reactions Maybe the applause, maybe the laughs when you crack a joke, maybe the ahs and the ohs, and occasionally the boos. We miss all of that. Even the boos we miss. There are times when we'll purposely say something to, to get that reaction from the audience. So you miss all this, okay? And when you miss all this, psychologically, our attitude and demeanor tends to slow down or go take a back step. But don't do this. In fact, increase that portion. Attitude and demeanor under such circumstances in a virtual meetings especially becomes even more important. So don't lose your nerve when you're in a virtual meeting and don't get shelled up. Okay? In fact, go all out. Go all out. Include a lot of positive talk in your uh, in your communication and use anecdotes, preferably personal. Personal doesn't mean that you have to have gone through it, but personal, what I mean is something that you know firsthand. Because then if somebody asks you a question, you're more confident of answering because you know that thing, that anecdote has happened. Okay, so use a lot of positive talk, use a lot of anecdotes, and that will keep the audience, that, that will keep your team pepped up, especially when those anecdotes are really relevant and delivering a motivational message. Okay, control your message. Very often, because we don't get that reaction, we tend to shorten the message. Or we get disinterested and read it, read out the message as though it's some notice you are reading out. Don't do that. 
deliver the message as you had planned, with the intention you had planned, and keeping the goal in mind. At the end of the day, you have to achieve your goal. Okay, so deliver the message as planned. And whenever you're planning the message, make sure, as we just said, to include a lot of positive thoughts and anecdotes. Okay, and imagine at all times the team is actually sitting in front of you and they are giving you reactions and you respond like that. The team will understand what you are doing. Anybody who's sitting across you on everything will understand what you're doing. And as I said, don't speed up the message or don't shorten the message it will seem like you're just trying to deliver whatever you had to say and get and over and done with that job. No, you are there with a purpose and make sure that the purpose is understood by your team. Okay. And when you're delivering a message, don't, don't take a paper and read from it. That's the worst thing to do. You need to be able to look into the camera. Basically, you're looking at the eyes of the audience. Even if you're in a live meeting and somebody is reading from a piece of paper and not looking at you, you're going to say, oh God, what crap is this? It's the same in a virtual meeting. You need to look into the camera. That's the way you're looking into the eyes of your teammates. Okay. And therefore, you need to memorize key messages. Okay. Because as I said, you don't want to read everything from the paper. But yes, you can carry a cheat sheet with you on which you have written down the bullet. I do that. You might have frequently noticed I'm looking down because I'm looking at the next point I'm supposed to speak about or uh, the notes that I have made, but they are all bullet points. I don't write essays. I'm Everything I'm saying is not written down here. So carry a cheat sheet in which you have noted down all the points that you want to deliver so that you don't miss out anything. Your message is delivered completely in totality and practice. I didn't get my act together the first time I spoke. It's been practice, practice, practice. I don't mean for one presentation you practice 20 times. But 20 presentations, you keep practicing, you keep learning from it. What I used to do at one time is I used to record my own presentations. Okay, I don't even know whether the organizers were recording, but I used to record it, put an iPad in one corner where they can, I can see my whole self because that I was normally doing it live. So I wanted to see my body language. I wanted to see how I stand, how I walk, how I talk, everything. Record it and then relook at it once, twice, five times, ten times, till you have figured out all the salient features. What are the do's? What are the don'ts? Where you need to improve and where you need to better yourself. Not improve in the sense that get a negative into positive. Better means your strengths and talking of making them even stronger. So record and review what you are saying and speak at the right pace. You will notice sometimes I slow down, sometimes I speed up. Speed at, uh, speak at the right pace. And in a virtual meeting, I think it is necessary to speak a little slower than you would do in a live meeting. Because in a virtual meeting, people are in their way multitasking. Okay, and you can't see it. So speak a little slower, let them grasp it and then go on to the next point and enunciate every word and articulate your entire mass message very, very clearly. Okay, don't eat your words, so to say. Don't forget your A's and I's. Be enunciate very clearly, articulate very clearly and Something I learned after my first three, four episodes, use a good quality of a mic. Your message must go across clearly and the sound has to be right. Because often people are not going to relook at the video, they'll just listen to what was said because they are interested in the content and not always interested in your face. And that is why I also have a podcast. And of course, the other thing is the band we and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so now one thing that I think is necessary and I try to do it very often is include small talk in your uh, virtual meetings. Okay, often we think that small talk is all crap and that we are wasting time and it does not sound business-like and it makes you look unprofessional. Far from it. 
trust me, your team sitting in the meeting is always hoping and yearning for a human connection. Okay, so it may be uncomfortable for you to do small talk. It may be challenging and you might flounder at what words to use, but small talk is important and it is no small matter. So take it seriously. Okay, so there are various ways in which you can do it. I'm not going to get into details on use prompts in your notes. Write down that, okay, when I do this point, I will say this, which will initiate a uh, discussion, okay, where people will give ideas, where people will give suggestions, where people will do this thing. And make it a task. If you are uncomfortable with small talk, make it a task. Every single day, you will speak to one person or maybe two people and make small talk with them till you become fluent at it. Talk about the weather, talk about a movie, talk about whatever you want, okay? But make it relevant. Don't just go and say, on a hot sunny day or nice weather, right? Anybody comes and tells me that today I am going to lose it. Okay? A good thing to do would be to start and end the meeting or at least start or end the meeting with some small talk. Okay? So, let's, let's, let's think of doing that. Okay? And when you are planning the agenda for a virtual meeting, make sure to include some items on the agenda which will encourage the participants in the meeting to give their opinions, to share their ideas, to maybe give some sarcastic comment. It's okay, but let them call this thing. And another thing you can do is, within your organization, within your team, create a WhatsApp group. Now, that WhatsApp group is not for sending those good morning messages and all those silly messages that people follow. But define what topics can be included and posted on that WhatsApp. It can be some recipes if there are a lot of uh, guys and girls who are, love cooking. It can be a fitness uh, this thing. You can post something about fitness if people are involved in that. Find out what topics of interest to the team in general. There should be a good amount of people. Everybody is not going to be interested in everything. And to find even two things that everybody is interested in may be a challenge. But think about it. Okay. Now, having said this about meetings, another kind of meeting which is very critical is the one-to-one -one meetings. Very difficult and at times they don't give the desired. So for one-to-one -one meetings, set a well-planned schedule. Okay. Try to meet people as often as you can. It depends on the size of your team, naturally. If there are five people, you can even meet them every week. But if there are 500 people, you may not be able to meet them even every month. One to one. Huh? So, depending on the size of the team, figure out a schedule. Okay? And whenever you are figuring out a schedule and telling the person that I will meet you, be mindful. Ask that person if that schedule is convenient because they have other tasks which may, you may have given them. Or some of them may be reporting to two different bosses. Okay, so make sure that you ask them whether it is uh, convenient to them. Be mindful of their responsibilities also. Okay, and let them know well in advance. And when you let them know well in advance, but in advance of the meeting, it may not be as early as that, but make sure you send them the agenda so that they know what you are going to talk about. And during the meeting, Ask about everything that you need as a feedback, but talk of other things that will give that person happiness. Ask him about his progress towards the goal and check with him that the company is still helping him to achieve his goal. Okay, ask about his three, five, ten year milestones, what he hopes to be in those previous things. Ask about his personal life. Don't pry, but ask, is everything good? open-ended, let him respond, okay? So this is about one-to-one -one meetings. And to have amazing one-to-one -one meetings, the first thing is get your fundamentals right. Give feedback. Don't just talk about complaints, the good and the bad, but give feedback honestly, sincerely. Talk about growth and development, both of the company, both of uh, your employees, as well as yourself, okay? Make notes so that you don't forget what that person is communicating to you. And after the meeting, send a follow-up. I frequently do that. Okay, after a meeting, 
whatever was discussed, I'll put it onto uh, the email and send it. That becomes like the minutes of the meeting and a confirmation that we discussed that. And if you promise things at the meeting, make sure under all circumstances to live up to your promise. And if you cannot, make sure that you tell him why not. Okay. Now, there's another point discussing the undiscussables. Very often you have topics to discuss with your team, which are difficult to discuss. But you have to accept that that problem, that elephant exists in the room. It may be bad quality, it may be a rejection, it may be losing a customer, it could be interpersonal between two teammates, whatever it is. Now, when you're discussing such things, generally speaking, and I used to be in the initial stage very scared. I didn't want confrontation. I didn't want somebody to feel bad. I didn't want that two people should quarrel in front of me. So you need to check your fear. And you need to monitor and manage your responses. I learned that the hard way, but it helps. And communicate the intentions and acknowledge them, acknowledge the reality of their situation. This is very important. Okay. And then ask yourself when you're discussing the undiscussed, are you missing or overlooking something? Is there a challenge that is existing and the team is facing, but you are not willing to accept it? Or are you aware of what are the circumstances that the team is going through? And what can you do to improve the team's performance? Make the purpose of the discussion clear. Okay. And make sure that you are observing and registering, noting properly the team's attitude. Okay. Because that tells you a lot. Okay. And look into that jointly with the team or the teammate. Okay. So a great and effective way to establish superior teamwork is to organize an offsite. I have done that for quite a few companies. But in some of the companies, I noticed that an offsite is just a name for them. They go out and all the time they're focused only on the work. Now that work could very well have been done in the office. Ask people to pull their mobile aside, put them in one room, close the room and continue. Then offsite is meant to create better bonding. And therefore, Make sure that your offsite delivers that results. Okay. You need to make sure that you are giving enough opportunities for you yourself and the team to bond with everybody. So this doing the small things are going to establish you as a very successful, popular, and result-oriented leader, both in the eyes of your team as well as in the eyes of your team. I hope this has helped you and let me do have your comments if you have anything to say. Yeah. Thank you guys. Have a great day.